and the Pledge of Allegiance. First item on our agenda tonight are we in are we in business? Will be our minutes. Uh, all of us have had the opportunity to review those. Oh, excuse me. Diane or Angela, would you Hold like to take second. a roll call? We were told the microphones can't hear us, so okay. for the briefing of technical difficulties. Adam, do you hear now? We'll go ahead and do roll call, please. Um, Planning Commissioner Laura Wood. Present. Uh, Commission Chair Jeffrey Parker is absent. Present. Okay, we've all had the opportunity to read the music, sir. I mean the minutes. Are there any corrections that any of you would have? Okay, I'd entertain a motion. I move to accept the minutes as written. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, to approve the minutes as they are written. All in favor say aye. 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 That's unanimous. Okay, tonight we have two hearings and we have two hearings that are going to take some time tonight but we would invite anyone that has an issue that is not on our agenda. Okay, that takes care of that. Uh, so with that said, let's go to our public hearings. The first hearing. <clears throat> The applicant is seeking a variance to allow for a three foot setback from existing dwellings to the property line proposed in application BLA 23 06, resulting in a total of approximately six feet between dwellings. The subject property is zoned residential high density, which is R3. The comprehensive plan designation is medium density, R2. 
in the R3 zone, the minimum interior side setback is five feet and the minimum front setback is 15 feet. Application BR23-05 is being filed simultaneously with application PLA23-06. Application PLA23-06 is an, an administrative decision and is not decided upon by the Planning Commission. However, the approval of PLA23-06 is contingent on the approval of application VR23-05. The applicant is Laura LaRoque from the Udell Engineering and Land Surveying LLC. The property owner is Deborah Jensen. The file number is VR23-05. The property location is at 1589 and 1591 41st Avenue, Sweet Home, Oregon, 97386. Identified on the Lynn County Assessor's Map as 13 South, 01 East, 28 CD, tax lot 45. Uh, and the rest of it is regular day. Okay. Okay, here we go. Okay, we have some housekeeping items. <coughs> Uh, <clears throat> okay, I'm, I'm going to read the following. The applicable substantive criteria are listed in the staff report. Testimony, arguments, and evidence must be directed toward the criteria described or other criteria in the plan or land use regulation which the person believes to apply to the decision. Failure to raise an issue accompanied by statements or evidence sufficient to afford the decision maker and the parties an opportunity to respond to the issue precludes appeal to the Land Use Board of Appeals based on that issue. So <clears throat> regarding our first application, uh, is there any personal bias by the by the commission? No. no. Is there any conflict of interest? No. No. None. Any ex parte information? No. no. And I would just confess that I did drive out and look at it today. <clears throat> okay, the staff report. Uh, have you review the application? Area A and B have water and sewer services in 41st Avenue. 
and after the adjustment proposed area A shall abut approximately 40 feet of 41st Avenue, the applicant shall ensure that the appropriate easements are recorded for access to and from area B to 41st Avenue. Jump down to section three, review and design criteria. The variance is necessary because the subject development code provision does not account for special or unique physical circumstances of the subject site, existing development patterns, or adjacent land uses. A legal lot determination may be sufficient evidence of a hardship for purposes of approving a variance. Staff findings, the applicant is seeking a variance to allow for a three-foot setback from existing buildings to property line proposed in application PLA 23-206, resulting in a total of approximately six feet between dwellings. The dwellings and accessory structures are pre-existing. The dwellings on the proposed area A encroaches into the minimum size setback by two feet, and the dwelling on the proposed area B encroaches into the minimum growth setback by 12 feet. The minimum interior size setback in an R3 zone is 5 feet, and the minimum growth setback in an R3 zone is 15 feet. Approval of property line adjustment application PLA 23-06 is contingent on the approval of the setback variance proposed in this application. <coughs> the such variance is necessary for the preservation and enjoyment of a substantial property right of the applicant possessed by the owners of other properties in the same vicinity or district. An economic hardship shall not be the basis for a variance request. Uh, staff finds that the subject property about similar size and shape residential properties in the R3 zone to the south, east, and west. The proposed variance shall allow the applicant to preserve and enjoy the property rights the same as the owners of, of other R3 zone properties in the vicinity. The authorization of such variance will not materially detrimental, be material detrimental to the public welfare or interest to property in the vicinity or district in which the property is located or otherwise conflict with the objectives of any city plan or policy. Staff finds that the variance will not be material detrimental to public welfare or interest to property in the city or district in which the property is located. The variance does not conflict with the objectives of any city, city, city plan or policy. The, the need for variance is not self imposed by the applicant or property owner. For example, the variance request does not arise as a result of a property line adjustment or land division approval previously granted to the applicant. The subject property has two pre-existing single-family dwellings. The current municipal code does not allow for two single-family dwelling units on one lot. The applicant is proposing to separate the dwellings with property line adjustment application PLA 23-06 filed simultaneously with the variance application. Separating the dwellings will bring the use into conformance with the current code. However, to separate the dwellings, the property line adjustment will not conform to the side and front setbacks of the R3 zone. The approval of the property line adjustment is contingent on the approval of the variance. The variance requested is the minimum variance which would alleviate the identified hardships. See staff finds that the subject property has two pre existing single family dwellings. The request to allow a three foot setback from the existing dwellings to the property line proposed in the application PLA 23 06 is the minim minimum variance to alleviate the identified con conformance with R3 zone land use. According to the site map provided by the applicant, there is approximately six feet total between the existing dwellings. If all applicable building code requirements and engineering design standards shall be met. Staff finds there are pre-existing buildings and accessory structures on the subject property. If approved, any future development shall comply with the city of Sweet Home Engineering Standards, Sweet Home Municipal Code 17.14 Residential High Density R3 Zone, and the Oregon Residential Specialty Code. Staff recommendations. Staff finds the applicant has requested the minimum variance necessary to alleviate the hardship due to the pre-existing placement of the single-family building on the subject property. Staff has recommended conditions of approval listed below. Conclusions, the applicant, the application shall be subject to compliance with the conditions listed below as required by the findings of fact presented in the review criteria in section three above. Any modifications to the conditions listed below would require approval in accordance with provisions of law, for example, variance, subsequent land use, et cetera. Conditions of approval. One, administrative approval in compliance with the conditions of approval for property land adjustment application PLA 23-06. Two, any future development shall comply with the City of Sweet Home Engineering Standards and the Development Standards of Sweet Home Municipal Code 17.14.070. Planning Commission action. The Planning Commission will hold a public hearing at which it may either approve or deny the application. If the application is denied, the, ap <clears throat> the action must be based on the applicable review and design criteria. Appeal period. The staff recommends that the Planning Commission's decision on this matter be subject to a 12-day appeal period from the date of the decision is mailed. Order after the Planning Commission makes a 
decision staff recommends that the Planning Commission direct staff to prepare an order that is signed by the chairperson of the Planning Commission. The order shall memorialize the decision and provide an official list of conditions, if any, that apply to the approval if the application is approved. Motion. After opening the public hearing and receiving testimony, the Planning Commission's option to include the following. One, move to approve application BR 23-05 and thereby permit the variance for the subject lot located at 1589 and 1591 41st Avenue. Sweet Home, Oregon 97386. Identify the Lynn County Assessor's Map as 13S01E28CB, tax lot 04500. Adopting the findings of the fact list in Section 3 of the staff report, the setting of the 12 day appeal period from the date of the mailing of the decision, and hereby direct staff to prepare an order to be signed by the chair to memorialize this decision. Two, to move to deny application BR 23-05 and thereby deny the request for the variance for the subject lot located at 1589 and 1591 41st. Avenue, Sweet Home, Oregon 97386, identified on the Lynn County Assessor's Map as 13S01E, 28 CD, tax lot 04500, adopting the findings of fact, setting of a 12 day appeal period from the date of the mailing of the decision, and hereby direct staff to prepare an order to be signed by the chair to memorialize this decision. Three, move to continue the public hearing to a date and time certain, or four other. No. <laughs> We would invite anybody to come forward that are in favor of this application. Or the, excuse me, the applicant. Good evening. Thank you. My name is Laura LaRock with Udell Engineering and Land Surveying. My address is already on the record. Uh, so thank you, staff, for giving a presentation of the staff report. Um, I won't spend too much more time on this application. Uh, essentially, the request is a variance for um, allowing a lesser setback standard. Uh, on this particular one, the property owner owns three different adjacent properties or abutting properties. Uh, two single family detached dwellings were constructed on one of the lots. The proposal adjusts the property line to separate those two dwellings, uh, which results in a total setback between the two dwellings of six feet, three feet to each property line. Um, this setback does not trigger any concerns through the building code for fire life and safety. All accesses or all dwellings are able to have utilities and driveway access to the site. Um, and in this zone, there are dwellings that are allowed to be constructed right on property lines at the property lines with a zero setback. Um, so even the lesser setback it does not cause any um, sort of major differences in the construction pattern of that community. So with that, I'll wrap up my presentation and answer any questions that you might have. I don't have any. So just to clarify the one of the houses needs an easement in order to have access to 41st Avenue and that's. Yes, yeah, so the configuration of the two lots, it was at the end of a cul-de-sac. Um, as the lots were originally platted, both parcels would have had street frontage. Uh, the proposed property line adjusts the lines and it creates a landlocked parcel, one that does not have street frontage, but would have access by easement. Uh, the access, it might be hard to see on this map, but it's actually on lot 21, just to the south of the existing homes. Um, this is the third lot that the property owner has. Um, Technically, an easement cannot be recorded to grant yourself rights because you already own the property. Um, but if they were ever sell the property, an easement could be put in place um, when the, the deed changes for that property. But they will create separate driveway accesses to this one um, and a shared driveway situation if lot 21 was ever to be developed. Thank you, Laura. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, any questions of the applicant? Thank you very much. Appreciate your time. Are there any in the audience who would like to speak in favor of this application? Are there any in the audience who would like to speak against this application? Are there any in the audience who would like to speak neutrally? neither for nor against the application. Okay, we'll close this hearing at 6.53 and entertain some discussion among the
Planning Commission. Can staff give a little information about how two houses ended up on a lot that should only have one? Uh, it was historically that way. Uh, it's just a pre-existing non-conforming lot, and they, uh, it's the same family that owns all of it. And so they, you know, and the only way to divide it is to go between the houses. Um, but it had been that way for years. So you know, in order in order for them to divide it, they only put it. Between. So I don't Any have. Any other questions? I didn't go back and look at the real far to see it, but it's been there for a long time, so I can't give you dates. <laughs> it seems to predate when we administered our own building permits, and so it, it could be that it was a mistake between coordination between the county and the city. It's unknown. Okay, thank you. Any other comments or questions? The purpose of dividing it right now, as I understand it, is that it is in violation because two houses on one lot are not permitted. I don't know if they have any intent of selling one or not selling one, but it looks like it's a situation that we've inherited and is already there. And it, it doesn't matter what we do, it's, it's not going to be totally corrected. So we've got to need a, a compromise of some kind. It isn't going to make this lot. It's already going to have a house on it, so it's not going to be developed more. It isn't right. it isn't for developing anything else. It's just for straightening up a, a previous. Right. <laughs> it's, it's designated high density. It's, it's R3, so it could be developed the lot. So it, it, the, yes, this this could be developed further, but it, this this change would bring it more into conformance. Um, one thing I would add is that if there were no house here, certainly there would be no need for the variance. Um, but also we would apply our setback to whatever proposed home was to be built. So any further development of this property would have to meet current code. Right. Okay, any other questions? That that was my question. Uh, I would entertain comments from each of you regarding the decision that we, we will make. Laura? Well, um, I'm leading to a motion to approve because it seems like this is what needs to happen. Then we at least have both homes on separate lots, which is much more in compliance with what our city wants. Um, and there's no place to draw the lot line except between those two houses, which only has so many feet in between. So six feet and it's gonna be three and three. Exactly. So Give up. So I agree with Laura. I mean, it, this is a little bit of a fluky thing. And how do you correct the fluky thing? Well, you do your best. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it makes sense to separate the two houses on separate pieces of property. And this is the way, this is the only way it can happen. Mary? I just oh, <laughs> I I agree that um, trying to clean up a previous uh, situation that looks like about the best place to about the only place to divide it and uh, would bring it more in compliance with current situation. So I see no reason why we shouldn't uh, approve it. Okay, I would entertain a motion. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve application VR 23-05 and thereby permit the variance for the subject lot located at 1589 and 1591 41st Avenue, Sweet Home Morgan 97386, identified on the Lynn County Assessor's Map 
as 13S01E28CD, tax lot 04500, adopting the findings of fact listed in section three of the staff report, the setting of a 12 day appeal period from the date of the mailing of the decision, and hereby direct staff to prepare an order to be signed by the chair to memorialize this decision. I second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Or do we want a roll call vote? Okay. Thank you for coming. This is approved. Our next application. The applicant is requesting to, excuse me, I'll open this at 658. The applicant is requesting to subdivide an approximately 41.03 acres, 1,787,269 square feet property into 161 total lots over the span of four phases. Phase one includes 41 residential lots and one storm water track. Phase two includes 43 residential lots and one storm water track. Phase three includes 46 residential and two storm water tracks. Phase four includes 27 residential lots. The subject properties are north of Coulter Lane, east of 43rd Avenue, south of 45th Avenue, and south of 46th Avenue. The subject properties are identified on the Lake County Tax Assessor's Map, number 13S01B33D, tax lots 2800 and 3502. Lot sizes shall range in size from approximately 7,029 square feet to approximately 28,907 square feet. All lots shall be eligible to be developed with single family dwellings or duplexes. The subject properties are in the residential low density R1 zone. Uh, I'll just mention this applicant. Application SD23-01 is reliant on the approval of application PLA2305, application PL323-05 is an administrative decision and is not decided upon by the Planning Commission. Applications SD23-01 and PLA23-05 are being filed simultaneously. Let's turn the time over to the staff. Excuse me, I will do that. Is there any, uh, any bias among the Planning Commission? No. No. Any conflict of interest? No. 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 Any ex parte information? No. No. Okay, and I will read the following. The applicable substantive criteria are listed in the staff report. Testimony, arguments, <clears throat> and evidence must be directed toward the criteria described or other criteria, criteria in the plan or land use regulation, which the person believes to be to apply to the decision. Failure to raise an issue accompanied by statements or evidence sufficient to afford the decision maker and the parties an opportunity to respond to the issue precludes appeal to the Land Use Board of Appeals based on that issue. Then I will provide a staff report. Um, just a couple things. 
not my week. One typo on this one, the footer. It's corrected, but I didn't think that. I didn't want to print all yours out again. The other part is Diane gave you, there's two extra comments that came in after your um, packets. Uh, hopefully you've had a chance to read those. So let's bring them up. All right. Hold on to your seats. <laughs> Application SD 21-01. Application under consideration is proposed tentative subdivision plan. The proposed subdivision will be completed in four phases and include 157 residential lots, three storm water tracks. The subdivision approval is reliant on the property line adjustment application being filed concurrently. The subject properties are located east of 45th Avenue, north and east of Coulter Lane, the southernmost end of 45th Avenue, and the southernmost end of 46th Avenue and is identified by Lynn County Assessor's Map 13S01E33D, tax lots 2800 and 3502. Subject property is in a residential low density and the comprehensive plan designation is low density residential. Based on the review of the FEMA flood insurance rate map panel 41043C0914G and 41043C0918G, dated September 9, 2010, the subject properties are not in the special flood hazard area. The subject property does show wetlands and waterways on the property depicted on the Sweet Home Local Wetlands Inventory Map, SSR Parcel one has access from Avenue East. Don't have access to stairs. There are city water and sewer systems one running north, budding, and one running north to south on proposed. Minimum lot area. Minimum lot area shall conform to the requirements of the zoning district in which the parcel is located. Access easements or the access strip to a flag lot shall not be included in the calculation of lot area for purposes of compliance with any minimum lot size provision of this development code. Staff plans the subject lots are zoned residential low density R1. The minimum lot area is R1 zone. Start over back at A. A, minimum lot area. Minimum lot area shall conform to the requirements of the zoning district. It's access easement or access strip to flag lot. Shall not be included in the calculation of lot area or purposes of determining. Subject lots are zoned residential low density R1. The minimum lot area in the R1 zone is 7,000 square feet. Based on the submitted site plan, both lot sizes shall rank lot sizes shall rank and flag from approximately 7,000 Based on the above findings, staff finds the application complies with these criteria. Lot width and depth. The depth of a lot or parcel shall not be more than three times the width. Lots or parcels created for commercial, industrial, or public use shall be exempt from depth ratios. Based on the submitted site plans, no depth of lot or parcel exceeds three times the width of the parcel. Access all lots, all new lots or parcels shall have access to shall access a public street, except that residential lots or parcels may be accessed by a private access easement developed in accordance with the first of chapter 17.42, wherein it is determined that a public street access is, one, infeasible due to par parcel shape, terrain, or location of existing structures, two, unnecessary to provide for future development of adjoining property, three, no more than 10% of a lot in a subdivision may be accessed via a private street or private access easement. Staff findings based on the submitted site plans, all new lots or parcels shall have access to shall 
access a public street. No lot within the subdivision is accessed via private street or private access easement. Based on the above findings, staff finds application complies with these criteria. Speed flag lots, flag lots shall be subject to the following development standards. That access strip shall be a minimum of 20 feet. The, the improved surface shall be a minimum of 14 feet. Access strip shall not be included in the lot area calculation. The length of the access strip exceeds 150 Parcel lot shall include a term area for applicable fire restriction requirements. And the applicant has not proposed any flag lots. Through lots, through lots shall be avoided except for essential to provide separation of residential development from traffic, traffic arteries, adjacent non residential activities, or to overcome specific disadvantages of topography. Screening or buffering pursuant to the chapter 17.54 may be required during the review of the land division request. Based on the submitted site plans, the applicant has proposed one through lot, lot 14 in phase four. There is a proposed fire perimeter in Hammerhead at the rear of lot 14, along C Street, making the front of lot 14 along B Street. Line, lot sidelines. The sidelines of lots, as far as practical, shall run at right angles to the public street, private street, or private access easement upon which the lot or parcel faces. As depicted on attachment B, the proposed parcels would have sidelines that are at or very close to right angles to the public street. Based on the above findings, staff finds the application complies with these criteria. Utility easements. Utility easements shall be provided on lots where necessary to accommodate public utilities. Easement widths shall conform to adopted engineering standards. Based on the submitted site plan, the applicant has proposed public utilities to be located in the public right of way and utility easements throughout the subdivision. Attachments B, exhibits F through F9 show where those are to be located. 758040 A, general, the length, width, and shape of blocks shall be designed with regard to providing adequate building sites for the use contemplated, consideration of needs for convenient access, circulation, control, and safety off street including pedestrian and bicyclists, and recognition of limitations and opportunities as topography. Staff findings, the subject lots are zoned residential low density R1. The minimum lot area in the R1 zone is 7,000 square feet. Based on the submitted site plans, the proposed lot sizes shall range in, from approximately 7,029 square feet to approximately 28,907 square feet. The lot sizes provide adequate building sites for single family dwellings and duplexes. Based on the submitted site plan, the applicant has Proposed local street widths of 40 feet for A Street and 45 feet for B Street, C Street, E Street, 44th Avenue, 45th Avenue, and 46th Avenue. The existing cultural lane is 40 feet. Applicant has proposed a seven foot sidewalk and curb width for pedestrian traffic. Staff finds that the length, width, and shape of the block provides adequate building sites and the applicant considered safe pedestrian and bicycle traffic, convenient access, and traffic circulation. Based on the above findings, staff finds that the application complies with these criteria. Sizes, blocks shall not exceed 1,000 feet in, in between street lines with preferred length of 500 feet. Exceptions are permitted for blocks adjacent to arterial streets or if the previous development pattern or topographical conditions justify a greater length. The re recommended minimum distance between collector street intersections or with arterial street is 1,800 feet. Step findings, based on the submitted site plans, the length of the subdivision blocks range from approximately 371 feet to approximately 567 feet. The width of the subdivision blocks range from approximately 82 feet to approximately 200 feet. Based on the above findings, staff finds that the application complies with these criteria. Traffic circulation. The subdivision shall be laid out to provide safe, convenient, and direct vehicle, bicycle, and pedestrian access to nearby residential areas, neighborhood activity centers, such as schools and parks, shopping areas, and employment centers, and provide safe, convenient, and direct traffic circulation. At a minimum, nearby means the distance from subdivision boundary, a quarter mile for pedestrians and one mile for bicyclists. Per the CAD engineering comments in section two, the development will require a traffic impact, impact study. An increase of 300 trips is the threshold at which a study is required. Considering all phases of development, average daily trips would increase by a minimum of approximately 1,480. Connectivity. To achieve the objective in C, traffic circulation above, the city may require the following. Stub in streets where the potential exists for additional residential development on adjacent property. The city may require reserve strips and street plugs to preserve the objective of street extensions. Access ways. Public access ways to provide a safe, efficient, and direct connection to cul-de-sac streets to pass through oddly shaped or blocks longer than 600 feet to provide for 
networks of public paths creating access to nearby residential areas, neighborhood activity centers such as schools and parks, shopping areas, and employment centers. Staff findings per the CAD engineering comments in section two, a one foot wide reserve strip should be dedicated to the city at the end of each incomplete street. And all Hammerhead style fire department turnarounds should be constructed as temporary measures. It appears that this applies to exhibit E2, East End of A Street, B Street, C Street, D Street, and Coulter Lane. Any additional Hammerheads that are being put in place until a subsequent phase of street construction is initiated, as indicated in the plan. All streets that will not be extended in a subsequent phase of construction should end with a cul de sac as opposed to a Hammerhead. The streets that were identified as streets that will not be extended into a subsequent phase of construction are described at the eastern end of C Street, the eastern end of A Street, the eastern end of Culver Lane, and the southern end of 46th Avenue. The collector and Ontario connections, access way, bikeway, or sidewalk connections with adjoining Ontario and collector streets shall be provided if any portion of the site's arterial or collector street frontage is over 600 feet from either the subdivision access street or, access, or other access way. The placement of an access way may be modified or eliminated natural features such as adverse topography, stream, wetlands, include such a connection. Based on the submitted site plans, A Street, C Street, and Culture Lane will connect to 43rd Avenue. 44th Avenue extends from A Street to Culture Lane. 45th Avenue and 46th Avenue will be extended from North Property Valley to D Street, and the applicant has proposed a seven foot wide curb and sidewalk throughout the subdivision design. Design standards. Pedestrian bicycle access way shall meet the following design standards. Minimum dedicated width 10 feet, minimum improved width 8 feet. The access way shall be designed to prohibit vehicle traffic. Um, staff findings, no pedestrian or bicycle access ways are shown on the submitted site plans. 1758060 improvements. The following improvements shall be required for all Subdivisions, Front, frontage improvements, half street improvements designed to the city's engineering standards shall be required for all public streets on which a proposed subdivision fronts. Additional frontage improvements shall include sidewalks, curbing, storm, sewer, sanitary sewer, water lines, and other public utilities as necessary, and such other improvements as the city shall determine to be reasonably necessary to serve the development or the immediate neighborhood. Two, Project streets, streets within the subdivision shall be constructed as required by the engineering standards. Three monuments, monuments shall be established as required by the engineering design standards. Four surface drainage and stormwater system drainage facilities shall be provided within the subdivision and to connect the subdivision drainage to drainage ways or storm sewers outside the subdivision. Design of drainage within the subdivision shall be constructed in accordance with the engineering design standards. In the circumstance where existing stormwater lines are adjacent to or within the project, the system development charge is required in accordance with the city's adopted system development charge ordinance. Five sanitary sewers. Sanitary sewers shall be installed to serve the subdivision and to connect to the subdivision to existing mains, both on and off the property being subdivided, conforming to the engineering design standards. The city may require that the developer construct sewer lines of a size in excess of that necessary to adequately service the development in question where such facilities are or will be necessary to serve the entire area within which the development is located when they are, when the area is ultimately developed. The city may also require that the construction take place as an assessment project with such arrangement with the developer as is desirable to assure his share of the construction. In the circumstance where existing sanitary sewer lines are adjacent to or within the project, a system development charge is required in accordance with the city's adopted system development charge for <coughs> Six, water system, water lines with valves and fire hydrant services ser serving the subdivision and connecting the subdivision to the city and mains shall be installed in conformance with the engineering design standards. The design shall take into account provisions for extension beyond the subdivision to adequately grid the city system and to serve the area within which the development is located when the area is fully developed. However, the city will not expect the developer to pay for the extra cost of mains exceeding eight inches in size. In the circumstance where existing water lines are adjacent to or within the project, a system development charge is required in accordance with the city's adopted system development charge ordinance. Seven sidewalks. Sidewalks shall be installed along both sides of each public street and in any pedestrian ways within the subdivision. Sidewalks shall be constructed at time of development of the subdivision. Street lights. The installation of street lights is required at locations and of a type required by city standards. Nine street signs. Installation of street name signs and traffic control signs is required at locations determined to be appropriate by the city and shall be of a type required by city standards. Ten other requirements. 
Curb cuts and driveway installations are not required of the developer at the time of development, but if installed, shall be according to the city standards. Street tree planting is not required of the developer, but if planted, shall be according to city requirements and of a species compatible with the width of the planting strip and underground facilities. At least one tree will be located in the planting strip. An additional tree shall be planted either in the planting strip or yard adjacent to the street or streets. Trees must be planted and viable prior to occupancy. Completion of improvements, all improvements required under this chapter shall be completed to city standards or assured through the performance bond or other in instrument acceptable to the city attorney prior to the approval of the final plat of the subdivision. In no case shall the bond exceed 5% of the remaining project improvements as determined by the city engineer. Staff findings per the CAD engineering comments in section two above, the development will require traffic impact study. An increase of 300 trips in is the threshold at which a study is required considering all phases of the development. Average daily trips would increase by a minimum of approximately 1,480. A one foot wide reserve strip should be dedicated to the city at the end of each incomplete street. All hammerheads style fire department turnarounds should be constructed as temporary measures. It appears that this applies to exhibit E2 East end of A Street, B Street, C Street, D Street, and Culture Lane. Any additional hammerheads that are being put in place and until a subsequent phase of street construction is, is initiated, as indicated in the plan. All streets that will be extended into subsequent phase of construction should end with a cul-de-sac as opposed to a hammerhead. The streets that were identified as streets that will not be extended in a subsequent phase of construction are described as eastern end of C Street, eastern end of A Street, eastern end of Culper Lane, and southern end of 46th Avenue. Street lights will need to be installed at the appropriate locations. All new street lights in the subdivision shall be aluminum material with an anchor pier the light fixture itself shall be an LED luminaire and should conform to Oregon PUC rules. For the Public Works Engineering Commons in Section 2, the water line on 43rd Avenue will allow the proposed tie-in shown in the design. <coughs> the water line entering the subdivision from 43rd Avenue, 6-inch water main tap will need to be an 8-inch C900 PVC line. The 8-inch PVC water Lines serving the subdivision will need to be looped and tied back into our existing 8-inch ductile iron water main on 46th Avenue. The design calls for a sanitary sewer tie-in on 43rd Avenue into an existing 10-inch line. However, the existing sewer line on 43rd Avenue is only an 8-inch concrete line. The design also shows the existing sewer on Culper Lane being a 6-inch concrete line and is an 8-inch concrete line. The existing sewer line size on Culper Lane will be sufficient, but the 43rd Avenue 8 inch line will need to be upsized to a 10 inch 3034 PVC from A Street tie in north to Long Street, where it will tie into our existing 12 inch line. For subdivision stormwater system outlets into 43rd Avenue ditch, we would need to see an engineered stormwater development report that shows pre and post development runoff rates to ensure the existing 43rd Avenue ditch has appropriate capacity. Staff shall recommend a condition of approval that, all, that the applicant comply with all improvement requirements listed in the Omnibus Code 1758 Submittal requirements. <clears throat> all applications shall be submitted on forms provided by the city along with the appropriate fee. It shall be the applicant's responsibility to submit a complete application which addresses the review criteria of this section. The application shall include a statement explaining the proposal and providing an analysis of the, of the proposal relative to the approval criteria. Applicants for subdivision shall submit one 11 by 17 copy of the preliminary plan along with it. one digital copy. The preliminary plan shall include the following. General information following general. The following general information shall be shown on the tentative plan. The city map showing all streets, property lines, streams, floodplain, and the pertinent data to the local proposal. The north arrow on scale of drawing, tax map and tax lot numbers, and tax account of the subject property, the dimensions and size and square feet or acres of the subject property, e name of the subdivision development, two existing conditions, a location of all existing easements within the property, b location of city, utilities, water, sanitary, sewer, storm drainage, or within the adjacent property proposed for use to serve the development, c the location and direction of water courses or drainage soils on the subject property, e existing use of the property including location of existing structures, it should be noted whether the existing structures are to remain or be removed from the property, e direction of the drainage and appropriate grade of abutting streets, f Proposed streets, approximate grade and radius of curve. G, any other legal access to the subdivision other than a public street. H, contour lines related to an established benchmark on city datum having the following minimum intervals. 
areas with less than 5% slope, one foot contours, areas with slope between 5% and 10%, two foot contours, areas with slope greater than 10%, five foot contours. Proposed plan, locations, approximate dimensions, and area and square feet of all proposed lots. All lots shall be numbered consecutively. Location, with and purpose of any proposed easements. All areas to be offered to public dedication. If any portion of the property is not proposed to be included in the subdivision or any public dedication, that portion shall be identified as a remnant parcel. A draft subdivision or development plan shall be included showing how the proposed subdivision will provide needed access and utilities to serve future development of the remnant parcel and proposed phasing. That findings, the applicant submitted an application SD23-01 on December 12, 2023. Staff deemed the application complete on December 20, 2023. Conclusion and recommendation. Based on the findings discussed in Section 3 above, staff recommends that the application be approved. The application shall be subject to compliance with the condition system below, as required by the findings of fact presented in the review criteria in Section 3 above. Any modification to the conditions listed below would require approval in accordance with provisions of law, for example, variance, subsequent land use application, etc. If the Planning Commission approves this application, staff recommends that the conditions of approval listed below be required in order to ensure that the application is consistent with the findings of the review and design criteria in Section 3 and as required by the Sweet Home Municipal Code and the provisions of law. Appeals to the Land Use Board of Appeals, LUBA, may only be based on review and design criteria listed above. Recommended conditions of approval. The application is approved. One, final configuration of proposed lot shall substantially conform to the plot plan. And plot plan. Reviewed in this application, phase one includes 41 residential lots and one stormwater track. Phase two includes 43 residential lots and one stormwater track. Phase three includes 46 residential and two stormwater tracks. Phase four includes 27 residential lots. The subject properties are north of Coulter Lane, east of 43rd Avenue, south of 45th Avenue, and south of 46th Avenue. The subject properties are identified on the Lane County Tax Assessor's Map as 13S01E33D, Tax Laws 2800 and Lot sizes shall range from approximately 7,029 square feet to approximately 28,907 square feet. All lots shall be eligible to be developed with single family dwellings or duplexes. First, we home use for 1710.030B. The subject properties on residential residence will be R1 zone. Two, the applicant shall comply with all requirements identified by the Kid Engineering and Public Works Engineering Department comments in Section 2 above. The applicant shall comply with all storm drainage and grading requirements in Sweet Home Municipal Code 17.46. The applicant shall comply with all utility lines and facility requirements in Sweet Home Municipal Code 17.48. The applicant shall comply with all street standard requirements in Sweet Home Municipal Code 17.42. The new property line shall be situated so that all buildings and structures comply with the yard setback requirements and residential low density zone. In addition to engineering design standards, improvements installed by a developer for any land division, either as a requirement of these regulations or development developers' options, shall conform to the requirements of the development code, the improvement standards, and specifications adopted by the city, and shall be installed in accordance with the following procedures. A, city approval required. Improvement work shall not commence until plans are approved by the city. All plans shall be prepared in accordance with the requirements of the city. B, notification. Improvement work shall not commence until the city has been notified in advance, and if work has been discontinued for any reason, it shall not be resumed until the city has been notified. C, inspections. Improvements shall be constructed under the inspection and to the satisfaction of the public works director or designee. A city may require changes in typical street sections and improvements if unusual conditions arise during construction to warrant such changes. D, installation of utilities. All underground utilities, sanitary sewer, and storm drains installed by the developer shall be constructed prior to the surfacing of the streets. Stumps for service connections for underground utilities and sanitary sewer shall be placed to a length eliminating the necessity for disturbing the street improvements when service connections are made. E, as built drawings, a plan or a map or plan showing all public improvements as built shall be filed with the Department of Public Works upon the completion of the improvement for Sweet Home Municipal Code 17.58078. Within two years of the final decision, the final approved plat or first phase shall be recorded with the county. If the first phase final plat is not recorded within two years, preliminary approvals shall lapse and new applications shall be required. All phases of an approved plat shall be recorded within 10 years of the final date of the decision. Nine effective date for the final plat approval. The approval process for development shall become final upon the recording of the approval. Approved final plat together with any required documents with the county. Approved final plats shall become void one year after final city approval if they are not recorded. 
10, the applicant shall obtain all applicable development permits, which include but are not limited to public works permits, development permits, including building permits and erosion control permits. The applicant shall obtain a 1200 sea stormwater permit from the Oregon Department of Environmental Quality and any Department of State permits, permits as applicable. Planning Commission action. In taking action on the subdivision, the Planning Commission will hold a public hearing at which it may either approve or deny the application. The decision on the application must be based on the applicable review and design criteria. If approved, the Planning Commission may impose conditions of approval. Staff recommended conditions are included in Section 4. Appeal period. Staff recommends that the Planning Commission decision on this matter be subject to a 12-day appeal period from the date of the notice of the decision is mailed. Order after the Planning Commission makes a decision, staff recommends that the Planning Commission direct staff to prepare an order that is signed by the chairperson of the Planning Commission. The order would memorialize the decision and provide the official list of conditions, if any, that apply to the approval. If the application is approved, if the application is approved. Motion. After opening the public hearing and receiving testimony, the Planning Commissioner's options include the following. One, a move to approve application SD 23-01, including the conditions of approval listed in Section 4 of the staff report. Adopting the findings of fact listed in Section 3 of the staff report and setting the 12-day appeal period from the date of the mailing of the decision, and hereby direct staff to prepare an order to be signed by the chair to memorialize this decision. Two, move to deny application SD 23-01, including adopting the findings, the setting of the 12-day appeal period from the date of the mailing of the decision, and hereby direct staff to prepare an order to be signed by the chair to memorialize the decision. Three, move to continue the public hearing to a date and time certain, or four other. And we're done. Good job, Angela. I hope everybody digested every word. Okay, with that, uh, let's invite the applicant to come forward. Hey, Lyle, you want to unmute yourself and we'll see if we can hear you. Pardon? Good. Uh, I'm Andy, can you hear me? Uh, can, you, uh, can you be a little bit louder, Lyle? This is Angela. Oh, hi, Angela. Does that help? Yeah, a little bit. We'll just have to tell everybody to be quiet in here. <laughs> uh, I'm actually on, still on the move and trying to get to the office here uh, in a few minutes. I hope that uh, I can get a better connection. Okay, he just so everybody knows he was on his way. There was a wreck, <laughs> so he's trying to do this remotely. <laughs> All right, so go, whatever you want to go ahead, Lyle. All right, great, thank you. Uh, good evening, my name's Lyle Hutchins, uh, project planner. Uh, Mindy Cordell is there in the room uh, with you. Uh, she and her husband, Mark, are the applicants for the project. I think uh, Angela did a great job with uh, summarizing the project and the staff report. We are in agreement with, with the findings in the staff report and uh, with the proposed conditions of approval and ask for your approval of this application. And with that, I'll stop and see if I can answer any questions. That's a loaded question. <laughs> <clears throat> Are there any questions on the part of the planning commission? I have a question. Um, given the density of these uh, proposed subdivisions, did you give any thought to um, areas for uh, that could be considered outside space. There potentially could be 140 some odd families with children and children typically play in the street if they don't have any outside space. And I wondered if you could address that. Yes, I, and I, I think uh, staff uh, brought that up as a recommendation also 
and we are certainly uh, okay with uh, working with staff to uh, uh, basically uh, prepare and construct uh, some park at parks, if you will, at uh, appropriate places there. So we have included some pedestrian bicycle access ways to split up a few of those larger blocks, but uh, we do recognize exactly your concern that uh, there will be a need for some playground type areas. Commissioner Journey, if I may butt in a little bit on that. Um, I, I brought this up with them. As you may be aware, our code does not require uh, the dedication of parkland. But we do charge system development charges, including system development charges intended just for parks. And so the way the city has chosen to move forward policy wise is to collect that money from development and then that would go toward uh, the construction of a park. Now, the developer has the option uh, and one thing that we encourage is that if a, if a developer wants to dedicate additional uh, facilities that would fit within our plans for parks, for example, then the value of that uh, land or work in development could be credited off of the system development charges for that subdivision. And so um, using that kind of system, there can be some give and take between the city and the developer to find something that is not only good for the development, but good for the homes in the immediate area of the development. So if the applicant, um, if some of the applicants uh, system development charges go toward recreational development, there is no property to put that development on. Right. So that leaves the city with the onus of finding Correct. Some property that it could afford was local, um, etc. Correct. And right now we're going through a parks master plan process to identify the areas uh, especially needed for additional parks and specific ident identify specifically what size we would be looking for in those areas. Um, but for example, also if uh, a developer said, well, you know, I'd rather save that money on the system development charges. Um, an option would be to take some of the lots within the development and say, I would like those lots to become the neighborhood park. And then the city would give a discount on the system development charges for all the rest of the homes in the subdivision. Yeah. Or uh, we would take the money from all those system development charges and buy a park or buy land elsewhere in the immediate vicinity that would be used for a park if there was land available if yes correct however so, I, I would there is quite a bit of vacant land in the in this part of town so i understand what you're saying it's mm -hmm. all hypothetical it is and it's not in the um conditions of approval it you are correct it is not in the conditions okay. because it's not a requirement of our code right and that's a concern for me. um okay. Um, Lyle, it's uh, Commissioner Laura Wood here. I have a question um, just about uh, the planning and uh, the planning and developing of this plan. Um, can you talk to me about, um, you know, the the frame of mind of creating this plan? Because I do know that you left the lots a little bit larger than our minimum requirement, um, but you did fit about as many houses as you possibly could into these two lots. Um, and so just tell me about your planning for this community and, um, what, when you were building this subdivision, what you were thinking about, um, and what you were planning for this community and how you kind of see this community coming together in our town. Um, well, basically, uh, is a lot of this was terrain driven, so to speak, so that, uh, Closer to 43rd is generally the flatter part of the property and uh, 
most conducive to having the uh, minimum lot sizes. And uh, as it moves to the east, the uh, terrain increases considerably there. And because of that, uh, we've got some of the larger lots uh, in the uh, later phases. Part of the uh, planning also is that phase one does not have any impacts to delineated wetlands. And uh, uh, from a community standpoint, we've tried to provide good connectivity uh, and uh, again, keeping the lots at as close to uh, minimum lot size as possible. Uh, will help uh, try to create some affordable projects in there. And I uh, don't want to get into a definition of what affordable is, but uh, at the same time, uh, keeping uh, some higher density does help with the cost for the development. Um, so just as a follow up to that question, so I'm then uh, correct in assuming that the that the larger lots that are in phase three and four, although the lots are larger because of the um, the incline of those lots, the the lot is larger, but there would be really not much more usable lot space around the home because of the the terrain. C correct. That's that's our anticipation. Is that uh, uh, because of the terrain, we wanted to provide some larger lot sizes and the kind of the physical shape of the property uh, as we go to the east there uh, changes how the street pattern works so uh, but that's exactly right is is basically terrain driven so that uh, we're not anticipating uh, duplexes necessarily on those lots, but uh, to have a, at least sufficient buildable area for single family residents. Okay, thank you very much. Other questions? Yeah. <coughs> well, I have a few. <coughs> Even though the land to the east is forested and probably mostly in the hands of one company, uh, and I will ask this also of the city staff, what is the chance or likelihood that property to the east would ever have any further development? So the, the property to the immediate east is outside the city's urban growth boundary as well as our city limits. And so the only way that could be brought into the city is through an urban growth boundary expansion. Those are very difficult, especially if you're a city of our size with the amount of developable land that we already have within our urban growth boundary. And so in the you know next 20 years or so, I would find it extremely unlikely that any property to the east would come into the city's jurisdiction. Okay, now I have observed some of the comments that hammerheads and cul-de-sacs were intended to be temporary. <clears throat> and even though we have these circumstances to the east, uh, I've been around long enough that I've seen urban, both, urban growth boundaries change. So they do change, however difficult, but they do change from time to time. And it has always been a precedence in the city for one property owner to develop to the next property owner so that they could pick up there and develop their own property. Uh, with that in mind, what I do observe is that I, if I look at it right, I think there's only one street that is stubbed out that could go into the east. I was uh, a little concerned about that. So 
Let me also clarify the immediate east of this property, um, that angled line, um, that's a essentially a hillside. So no, not only is it running up against the urban growth boundary, but it's also running against, up against topography. And um, it's while certainly with modern technology, you can do all sorts of things to get a road built to different places. Um, it, it is really expensive. And so it, I, I don't think there's much hope in the way of road connections to the east. I think any road connections to other developable property would be to the north and uh, with a little bit to the south. And then that portion that you see uh, kind of in the middle on the south, um, it, the, on the map that's on the screen, it, there's, it says E-14. Uh, that's an existing um, existing home and, and um, fields, basically, uh, existing farm that's there. So certainly there's hope for, there's, there's reason to think that someday that might develop. And so you might have some connectivity between that um, southern portion of phase four and the uh, eastern portion of phase two, those could possibly connect to each other. But as far as anything to the east of phase four, um, there's really not much to uh, that we could foresee. That I, I know happening. that there's a pretty good hill there. Mm -hmm. But if that's the case, what I think is probably C Street. Why does it just end in stub without? That, that would be a sack or yeah, I'll turn this back over to Lyle since this isn't a staff matter. That's more of a of an applicant question. OK, well, I can direct oh. that to Mr. Hutchins. It looks like we lost him, but it seems like we've given a little thought to potential de development to the east, but not very much thought. One of the streets ends you know, like it could develop on through and the others are all ending in cul-de-sacs or hammerheads. It seems like we're not being consistent. And and that's something I would I would ask uh, Mr. Hutchins, but unfortunately it looks like we no longer have him on the um, connection. Um, Mindy, do you by any chance have any thoughts on that? Okay. Oh, he's back. I'm sorry. I got just went off the air for some reason. Okay, Mr. Hutchins, the question was the um, talking about the end of the streets uh, on the eastern end. There's uh, A Street that ends in a in a uh, hammerhead. Uh, B Street ends in a cul-de-sac. C Street ends in a hammerhead, and then the southern end of 46th Avenue ends in a hammerhead. The The question was really what what is the thinking behind that and um, what future connectivity options do you see for those streets? It, uh, yeah, it was basically terrain driven uh, as far as our thought process goes there that uh, it would be a real significant amount of earthwork to maintain uh, typical street grades to make those connections. I think we extended the southerly east-west street to a point that it would logically uh, have the best opportunity to make the connection to the east. But, uh, you know, depending on uh, uh, what you all think, we can sure make some further provisions for connectivity there. Uh, I think just wanted to recognize that uh, it does create the uh, possibility of uh, construction issues. Well, as, as an example, <clears throat> B Street ends in a cul-de-sac. Now, the whole purpose of this discussion is, is, will there ever be development further to the east? Mm -hmm. but the cul-de-sac could end in a hammerhead, which then could get further access to the east. The, the really still steep hill 
doesn't begin immediately. And there is a potential of some other development, in my opinion. So I, I think that's the thinking behind C Street ends, ending in that hammerhead. Um, and, and that would be the connecting point to anything further east. Yes, uh, but that's yeah. only one of several streets. Well, sure. So yeah. anyway, let's <clears throat> table that for the moment. Uh, some of my other questions were uh, the naming of streets. And we have in the past tried to name streets consistent. Those are those are temporary yeah, names. Yeah, temporary. Temporary. OK, the, the city does have a naming convention, uh, largely tree streets. And so we would work with the developer to and have appropriate. When would streets. we expect to have a traffic study? The uh, go ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry, Blair. Yeah, uh, we would anticipate uh, doing the traffic study and submitting that with the first phase of the preliminary plat to review along with the first phase uh, review for public improvements. And what about the timeline for the um, wetlands survey? Uh, the, that would really uh, depend on uh, market conditions and uh, absorption of the phase one lots, but uh, I think we would expect uh, to be uh, working on a wetlands fill permit uh, within the next uh, 24 to 36 months. So, and while I'm going to uh, break in here, this is Angela. So, if you look in your packet, the delineation report has been done. So, they are done with the report. It's just any, at this point, it's just any fill and grade permits that would BSL would require. The report is done and is out in part of your packet. So, that part they have already completed. Co so correct. Said, yes. Thank you. Yeah. Mm. Last yeah. It, regardless of what is approved tonight, um, if anything is to be approved, then they, they would still have to go through DSL for those right. permits and any mitigation um, efforts. And just to put some context on it, we a number of years ago approved Duck Hollow Phase Three subdivision. Mm -hmm. um, one of the reasons why that's still not built is because of the DSL permits uh, and they have made some changes as well. Um, and so these things, this is kind of the way that works and, and we would defer to the state for how to handle those, uh, those impacts. Okay, well, <coughs> another question. I know we try to get a maximum number of lots, but this whole project has traffic challenges and with this many houses and I just wonder why street B and street D if you don't come directly out to 43rd Avenue and connect it seems to me like it would alleviate some of the traffic problems um I think we were expecting uh 43rd to essentially act like a collector street and generally uh, end up with wider intersection spacings um, on collector streets to uh, basically help control traffic and the, and the uh, turning movements and the impacts then to all the traffic that moves on 43rd. Um, but that, that was our reasoning there is uh, uh, we thought of 43rd as being a little more than just a local street. Commissioner, I have a comment on that if you if I may. I'm sorry, speak up. I said I have a comment on that if I may. Um, the when you're um, the design of local streets has a huge impact on speeding. Uh, as anybody who's traveled on First Avenue knows, um, you having a very long local street results in people using it as a shortcut and take and, and speeding through and, and increasing their speed. 
when you have um, only certain streets that can get into a subdivision, it limits that speeding. And so if you had more streets that connect directly over to 43rd, it's going to increase that tendency for people to speed along to get that to that connection. And so it, it does help to have not as many um, direct connections to 43rd. <clears throat> And what is the city's long-term plan for 43rd? It would still be, it would be a collector. It's it's not an arterial street, but a, a collector street. So as a collector street, do we look forward to storm drainage and widening? Oh, sure. I, well, that, that's one of the reasons for requiring a traffic impact study is to determine, it, you know, what improvements are necessary to 43rd to facilitate the traffic. And so, um, as with with all of our streets, we look to what to see what the impact would be. Um, we do collect a transportation SDC also, which is designed to to channel money from new development into that system so we can make road improvements. But um, yes, all of our streets uh, can eventually be improved with traffic control devices, widening and so forth. The traffic impact study is what determines exactly what improvement needs is needed. So with the current planning, <coughs> uh, we can anticipate that there would probably be widening on the street that it is adjacent to this project. But is there a nexus for the storm drainage, yes. say, to Long Street? Certainly. And I'll, Lyle, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yes, uh, we have anticipated some additional right-of-way dedication along 43rd and in essence, uh, what we'd call a full half street improvement, which would be uh, uh, half of the street width, uh, improved the city standards, curb and gutter, planter strip and sidewalk across the frontage of the Coulter subdivision property there. And uh, would this by any chance be extended say to Long Street? Mm, Certainly Long there's a nexus, nexus issue here. Yeah, it would, would not be typical uh, that uh, continuing connection would be made as those properties to the north uh, redevelop, so to speak, and the improvements made. So um, it would be pretty tough to, uh, unless I, the traffic report came back saying that uh, uh, those street improvements were necessary, it'd be pretty tough to make that nexus. <laughs> <clears throat> Any other questions? Yes. We we'll call a it brief delay. Recess uh, for recess. Okay. Uh, Lyle, we're taking a recess, recess for a bio break. Great. Thank you. Thank Has you. Um, my reception improved? Whatever it takes. <clears throat> you seem to be coming through just fine. Okay. Thank you. For our audience, when we resume, we will very shortly invite comments from the audience, those that are in favor and those that are in opposition. Thank you for your patience. Thanks, Thank you, Commissioners, just as a reminder, also, um, if you are wanting to speak, um, it has to be up here and you have to give your name and address. Um, once you're back in the audience, you have to wait. So it's only up here, only during public testimony. So we have to, we all have the tendency to want to yell out comments. <laughs> 
So if you want to come up and have a comment, just make sure you do it up here. So. Tell me what where Longstreet is on this. It's cut off. It's more of the third. So it's not on you at all. No. Okay. Okay, we'll resume at uh, seven fifty-eight. Are there any other questions of I have the applicant? I have a question for Mr. Hutchins about the planting strip. Um, what do you anticipate? Um, how do you anticipate the planting strips will be developed? I know we require a tree, but I wondered if you had some other ideas. Mr. Hutchins, Mr. Hutchins you're on mute. No. Mr. Hutchins, if you're trying to respond, you're muted right now. So you'll have to unmute. Looks like you're unmuted, but we're not hearing anything. Blair, is that for oh, me? There you go. You're back. <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, what was the question now? The question was uh, the intentions for the planting strip of how that would be developed. Uh, basically, that would be uh, street trees and uh, ground cover. So have you considered any um, non water requiring ground cover, given that it's 2024 and access to water increasingly gets more expensive? Um, if we're trying to create a neighborhood where people can afford to live within their means, sometimes water service charges get onerous. And I wondered if you had any thoughts about that. Uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, there are, and when I say ground cover, it uh, uh, could be as simple as bark mulch. Um, we are used to using uh, uh, some pretty hardy, drought resistant, low growing, uh, ground cover type plants that are available. Uh, generally, though, to facilitate the uh, growth of the street trees and their establishment, uh, we do end up putting some kind of drip irrigation system in those planter areas to be sure that the street trees survive. So, uh, but it, uh, once everything's established, uh, there's generally no need to water those planter strips. I am a little bit biased because my opinion is, is that many of our beauty strips are not very beautiful. I am not opposed to a sidewalk adjacent to the curb, and I'll just leave that as a statement. I have a, a question. I know that 43rd Avenue right now, that's awfully loud. 43rd Avenue isn't going to handle a lot of extra traffic right now. Is the traffic study going to address uh, the extra traffic and how much when 43rd is going to be developed 
this whole development is going to be a lot of extra traffic. Uh, 43rd is going to need to have some work done on it. And uh, is the city going to pay for that? So is that a question for staff or a question for the applicant? I think it's more for staff. Okay. So I, I just wanted to remind the commission right right now is is time for question for for the applicant. Uh, later there will be. I don't want to hijack their their time, but I I can address that if you, <coughs> at the proper time. But I'll, okay. I'll let Mr. Hutchins address it if he wishes. Okay. Well, Mr. Hutchins, it seems like we're out of questions for you right now. Stay online because we'll give you an opportunity to respond to other comments in our meeting. So thank you. Pardon. Thank you. So with that said, uh, let's invite anybody in the audience who would like to come forward that has signed in or would like to speak in favor of the application. OK, this is the interesting part of the meeting. <clears throat> we would invite Anyone in the audience who would like to speak in opposition, please come forward. State your Commissioner, name and address. If, if you would start with the list in front of you, okay. I would, I would recommend. Um, I'm sorry, I may have to apologize. Katie Vineyard. I don't have to apologize. We were lucky. <laughs> Hi, I'm Katie Vineyard. I live at 4309A Long Street. Um, so this development, I guess, would be just north of me. South? Well, whatever. It's by me. It's by me and I'm not for it, so. Um, you guys were talking a lot about the hammerheads. I know this is phase four, but as I look at this, there's a hammerhead here. Here's the hammerhead and the lots come together. I know that uh, in the last development that I was not for, that was a big thing that the fire department didn't like. And to me, that is not a temporary hammerhead. And there are other ones on here that are similar. So this one, I believe, was on C Street. And then there's one on A Street that goes up and just stops and then that's the property. So I feel like that would be a fire hazard for the fire department. So I really don't agree with that, even though that wasn't in what I came to talk about. Um, I was concerned about a traffic study being connected, conducted. Uh, street improvements, are they going to be completed mainly so that two vehicles can pass each other? Because still at the end of 45th, which will be at some point one of the entrances, 45th to Long Street, one person has to pull out before another one turns in because the street is not wide enough. They did one of the half improvements, which helps towards that end, but it does not help 45th to Long Street. And so that's going to be a major concern, having this many more houses be able to have that entrance, even though it may be phase two. Um, also, I noticed that a lot of these have a 45 foot width of roads. I know during the last development, everybody said that they wanted 50. And so that's another concern of mine. You don't know what the width is right over here in like the old airport. But I was back in there where some of the hammerheads are and similar to this one where it just ends with properties. There is no room because so many people have three, four cars anymore because families are living together because it is expensive and there is no parking. I mean, I would be very concerned if I lived down there and there was a fire and this is very close in a lot of houses together. Um, the developer has not constructed drainage on the SD2202 according to their proposal, which is in violation of the city code 14.46.040. They are not to cause damage to properties or persons in the drainage basin. And is this going to be the same way? And what I'm talking about, the SD22-02, is the Naughty Pine. We are still dealing with water back there. They have the city out there constantly. They've had a plumber out there several times. And this is still not solved. So everything drains downhill. 
I mean, if I drop something, it's going down. The water is going to be the same way. So you've got all of this above us. You've got a 18 subdivision that has still not been developed because of water. And now you're going to be adding more. Um, there's concerns about the excess runoff and inadequate stormwater systems now. Um, development will only make the matter worse. When natural vegetation is replaced with an improvised surface, the natural cycle is altered, increasing stormwater runoff and reducing groundwater recharge. The result is more frequent flooding, higher flood peak flow, lower base flow in streams, and lower water table levels, which affect local wells. And you're in the area where there are still wells at because you were on the outside of city limits, so there are definitely still wells that it will affect. Um, this development is mostly situated on inventoried wetlands. Wetlands destruction increase flood and drought damage, nutrition runoff and water pollution. Let me repeat, wetland destruction increases water pollution in the streams of the local municipal water supply, not to mention degradation of associated plants and adequate life. Um, I have a map here of the inventoried wetlands. I mean, that's a lot of wetlands and not to mention 45th, even in the summertime, has water that is draining down the ditch. Um, another concern is elementary school capacity concerns. As recently as 2021, the school district had to make attendance boundary changes for Hawthorne Elementary to accommodate students due to incoming families as a result of developments. These changes impact families who may lose district transportation to dependent care providers, not to mention physiology stress as sudden changes in schools can lead to feelings of uncertainty and instability in a child's life as they have to adapt to a new environment, make new friends, and adjust to different teaching styles. And when I'm saying transportation, when you're changing districts and you know a friend is fairly close, that bus is no longer going to run there and it can be a huge impact on families. Um, I'd also just like it to be noted that it took me about eight weeks this last year of calling code enforcement before Cordell's property of the Naughty Pine on 45th was mowed and Cordell Construction doesn't seem to me to maintain their properties before building and selling them. And so now you're gonna start something else when things are not being maintained and um, still with the violation of not running the water how it should. I just don't want this proposal to be the same way saying they're going to do something and then it not being followed through and done because it's really frustrating being somewhere and seeing this and living with it and dealing with water. That's all I have for now. Thank you. <coughs> Any questions of her? Okay. We would invite Kay Thrash to come forward. <coughs> <coughs> Hello. My name is Kay Thrash. My address is 1118. 47th Avenue and it borders the northeast corner of this development and I did have a two page letter um, that you all have a copy of it outlines just kind of a assortment of concerns much like Katie the uh, water runoff issue I have up to two inches of running water on my field in the wintertime. It comes off that hill. That hill is owned by Hill Timber, managed by CTC. I doubt it's ever going to be developed, and it's got a lot of water that comes off of it. And if there's not a lot of mitigation done, it's, it's going to cause real problems. And the mitigation itself may cause additional problems 
as Katie said, um, anytime you replace natural vegetation with hard surface, you're going to have more runoff. It's going to affect the streams. It's going to affect the wells. I have a well on my property, and it's mostly kind of a surface water type well. They don't have real deep wells on that particular area to the north of this property. And so it's just a lot of little concerns about that, the number of houses, how small they are, um, has a tendency to lend, you know, people turning them into rentals. And then the people that have moved in say, oh, I don't want to live by a rental. And it just, it seems like all these little tiny houses are going to lead to a transient type situation instead of building a neighborhood and a home. You know, it's, this is sweet home. This isn't Portland. You know, we don't need little 7,000 square foot properties. The 8,000, which it used to be before they changed the size requirement, was a little bit better when I did my annexation and division. It was 8,000 square feet. My neighbors, uh, the Arthurs, also, it was 8,000 square feet. We're like, where'd 7,000 come from? Apparently, it was changed the end of 22, down to 7,000 square feet. Yeah, and so that's, that's a concern, to have that many houses on this development, that many people crammed into that space that has historically been all open field. 90% of the properties around it are larger properties, anywhere from a third of an acre up to 40 acres. You know, there's, there's a lot of open space in that area, and this has no open space in this yeah, development. We, we probably can't address the size of the property. That's mm -hmm. already established. Yeah, I, I see that they recommend approving it. Um, we've always been told that the roads had to be 50 feet wide. And this plan is 40 feet or 45 feet. What happened to 50 feet? The city's always said it's got to be 50 feet. So we have room for the utilities, sidewalks, and the beauty strip. I don't think that's changed. The fire department requires hammerheads and or... Okay. Uh, the city administration and mm -hmm. engineering... We're going to dictate what the minimum maximum mm -hmm. will be. So we, we really don't dictate that as a planning commission. No, but you you can make recommendations on what you want to see on the application and the final approvals. Yes, we're making notes. So, you know, it it's just what's good for the goose is good for the gander. You know, if everybody else has to do 50 feet, right of ways, then why isn't this 50 feet? You know, that that's a question. Um, I already talked about the... Uh, I, I need to make one other mention. Okay. Just in, in fairness to you and to the others, mm -hmm. if we can hold our testimony to about five minutes. Okay, how long have I talked? Three? I don't know, you've done wonderful. <laughs> Okay, I'm almost done. Um, yeah, I have the same concerns that I think several people here have regarding the flooding that historically occurs on Long Street. From 43rd to 45th, when it rains, generally the ditches overflow. And we have standing water in the street and that kind of thing. And this development is not going to help that issue any unless it is developed like you say and they put in storm drains we all pay it i pay it we don't have any storm drains on 47th you know so if we pay it and it's going into a fund to install storm drains at some point it would be nice if they got installed especially on long street because a ton of water comes off that hill <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. Do you have any questions? Do any of you have questions? Point of order, this 
I just want to reiterate, this is a, a public hearing. It's not a question and answer session. If if any of the public have questions about current current city rules, mm -hmm. city staff are more than happy to discuss that outside the meeting and let you know what the what is in our code right now. Um, and when if there were any changes, we're happy to go over when those changes happened. Um, but this is a meeting for the Planning Commission and not a back and forth question and answer. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Okay, uh, Joyce and or Bill, Chris. Yeah. Come forward, say your name and address. Okay. My name is here. Uh, my name is Joyce Krebs. Uh, I live on Long Street, 4305 Long Street. And uh, they, we have a water issue, big water issue. And uh, Public Works just keep coming out there and working on it. And they're trying to act like it's our fault. Well, it's not. It's They're doing that development back there. They've made it, cleared it all off. And now we got more water coming our way. I've put in uh, drains, and I had our and I had 22 loads of dirt brought in, and uh, lines going across to our other dra big drain, and they had all taken care of until they started working back there. And uh, I had some pictures, but I didn't bring them. Um, I forgot my phone. But the flood that we had, I mean, it's. It's just unreasonable. And Mr. Blair keeps calling, saying they're working on it. But I don't see them doing much. The Public Works did come out. And they said there was some rocks in there. They cleared that out. And we had rocks stacked around the culvert. And when we got all that water, it knocked them down. And it did push some of them in the culvert. But we didn't put them in there because I didn't want to stop the culvert up. That's why we put it there in the first place. Um, and then they run a camera in there. They couldn't see anything in there. I was over there and I looked. So, uh, and they still, you know, don't know what they're going to do. Huh, Blair? That's not oh, you do know what you're going to do? We are, that's a pretty big issue. And it's not actually related to this particular thing. No, I, I know it's not, but I, but I, but it is in process. I agree. It does need to be fixed still. It has, there's more to it than that. Uh, it is a different issue. And so I, I know it is. The planning commission's time oh, well, that matter. but they have a say so about well, it. Yes, but mm -hmm. this particular meeting is about this subdivision. I know. I know. Behind your house. Well, I know, but, but if I don't keep dinging, you guys aren't going to do and, anything. And, and we, I have, we have, Staff have met with the subdivision about that same issue. Mm -hmm. We've already talked it over. There's not going to be building activity until this thing gets figured out. We've already discussed how okay. this needs to happen. All right. So that but I'd like to know through. about it too. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. And once it, I ha and I've I just talked with you last week about. I know. I know. And so I don't have any more information okay. to tell you yet. I okay. 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 All right. Well, thank you. I, thank you. Thank, thank you, you for Joyce. the time. We now have a. Is it Dave? I've got nothing to add to that. He's my neighbor and he's got I'm Joyce's too. neighbor. <laughs> and uh, she pretty much covered it. Looks like somebody by the name of Hood. Over here? I, I'd probably, I'm probably Nine miss. Five five. Anyway, 955 45th. Hello. Clearly because I can't read. Oh, geez. Read it very well. Yes, my name is Cindy Hovader. I live at 955 45th Avenue, and the name is spelled H O V A T E R. And everything I've heard from the people in the audience, I live it. I live at the little square there at the end of 45th Avenue, and I did have Public Works come out and they had to dig another trench because the water was filling up over the culvert and on the other side of the street it was filling up. I have to say they were awesome to me. I didn't have any problem. They were there like that and uh, did a good job of it, even though their tractor sank about a foot into the dirt because it is saturated. 
it is so spongy. You walk out in the yard and you go down at least two inches. So as far as the water table, I'd say it's closer to floodplains than not. And everybody else, I agree. So that's pretty much all I have to say. I thank you. Any questions? Thank you yep. very much. <clears throat> okay, we have uh, Minnie Cordell. Did I mispronounce that? No, she's the applicant. So she 387 47 Scrabble Hill. Okay. And Debbie Jensen. Okay. So we've already had cake. Looks like we have things on that one too. So we've done it. <coughs> Well, this is a loaded question. Is there anybody that would like to make a comment, neither in favor or opposition? And with that, we will close the public hearing at 8.25 and discuss it among the planning commission. Well, um, I will start. Wait. One more thing, uh, Commissioner Wolthius. Typically, we offer the the applicant an opportunity to rebut anything that's been brought up. Thank you. I, I apologize. We'll get we'll do that. So, Mr. Hutchins, are you still with us? Yes, I am. Uh, you've heard many comments from local citizens, and we would give you the opportunity to rebut any of their comments or clarify anything that they have said. And Commissioner Wolfius, for the record, will you open it back up and then we'll have to close it again. So, uh, pardon? Uh, we'll reopen it. 826. Lyle, are you still there? Yes. Is it, so, is it okay? Go ahead. Yeah, this is an opportunity for you to rebut any anything that was brought up by the uh, opposing comments. Yes. Great. Thank you. Um, it seems like many of those issues surrounded drainage and traffic, lot size. Um, that's mostly what we've dealt with tonight. I'll, but the lot size, that's not an issue because that's already been established by our city. So thank you. Drainage and traffic are the big ones. And I, I think if I may, uh, uh, one of the smaller ones had to do with road widths. Uh, those road widths as proposed are also in accordance with the uh, development code standards. Um, with respect to drainage overall, uh, the design for the subdivision in total with respect to storm drainage will be in accordance with Oregon drainage law and uh, city standards. We are proposing uh, some water quality type rain gardens to uh, help deal with uh, water quality immediately off of the streets and the stormwater tracks that were mentioned earlier would provide the detention capability in order to uh, confine outlet flows to match historical undeveloped rates for each of the phases. Uh, um, Mr. Hutchins, this is uh, Commissioner Wood. Um, you, those storm drainage and you mentioned rain gardens possibly are an idea for, uh, how are those going to be maintained? Who will be in charge of maintaining those properties once the development is complete? In uh, 
generally, they are the stormwater tracks are maintained by an owner's association uh, under an established uh, set of CCNRs. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So, are you going to have a homeowners association? Yes, we anticipate that. Uh, basically, because of that requirement uh, to uh, maintain the stormwater facilities. Um, that sounds also, like a good thing. Thank you. Also, with respect to traffic and the traffic study, uh, the traffic study will also look at 45th uh, and 47th and the impacts to those streets and the needs uh, for improvement of those streets. We would anticipate uh, the initial traffic study would look at all of that and uh, with phase two, likely there would have to be some updates to the traffic study based on uh, current conditions at that point in time. But uh, with each phase, the traffic study would be looking at the improvements to the streets and uh, uh, certainly uh, at the long street intersection of each one of those. And with that, I think I will stop. Okay. Uh, Blair or Angela or Diane, do you have anything to comment on? And then we'll close the hearing. I I think the only the only thing I would say is that uh, Lyle, I'm I'm a little hazy on still on some of the, um, and this isn't a requirement. It's just a curiosity. Um, the hammerheads at the at the north uh, east that uh, uh, the end of uh, Street A, is that intended to uh, perhaps someday connect to 47th? That was our anticipation, yes. Okay. And, and, and that's uh, why it's not a cul-de-sac and, and, and it's more of a hammerhead style? Cor cor correct, because that, uh, you know, we could uh, uh, include right-of-way dedication completely to the east property line there. Uh, and uh, we configured it that way because for exactly that reason is it provides the opportunity to serve the property to the east. Uh, street C is really the same uh, logic there and uh, uh, was generally at C where I kind of felt like was the most important connection point. But at the same time, uh, depending on future street pattern, uh, extension of street A completely to the east property line may be appropriate. Okay. What, was there ever any thought to looping around from uh, from A down to B, then down to C? Uh, with the side slopes through that area uh, would be some pretty significant earthwork and, uh, uh, you know, it could be done. We've anticipated a pedestrian connection for, between B and C, but uh, not a, uh, a complete looping of uh, public street between those. Understood. Thank you. Can we close it? We'll close the public hearing at 8.31 and have a discussion among the I have some major concerns about the wetland report. And they already mentioned wetland fill, which I do not enjoy as a plan for developing our town. Um, there, there is significant amount of water on this property. 
and their plans plan to build homes directly on top of where there have been shown that we have that there is significant water standing water likes to sit on this property their plan for sewage drain or like sewer drain tracks of land um, is something that we've seen in development plans before um, but we've also seen recently problems with HOAs being able to maintain those or caring to maintain those um, and this property these ones are going to need to be maintained very well and built very well I I don't feel like the the development plan put much thought into the community of Sweet Home and where they were building this in our town. Um, but I do think they did a very good job of maximizing their space. It was after what I heard. Those are my comments, my concerns. <clears throat> so I'll just um, echo what Laura was saying about HOAs and um, the maintain maintenance of the drainage systems. Um, so it's clear that um, this development meets all of our criteria. Um, what it's lacking is a sense of community, a sense of a place where people feel comfortable living. I know we don't have criteria for that. Um, but I think it's important to voice my concern about, as I mentioned earlier, where are children going to play? There's no concern here about families. There's concern about meeting the application requirements, but not about the people who will eventually live there. And that's a concern for me. Um, and I think that's all I'll say at the moment. All right. The, uh, the development meets all the criteria. We have an urban growth boundary for a reason. And we are supposed to, as we grow, fill up those empty spaces. And this is an empty space that this development would, would fill. Um, they have addressed drainage. They have addressed the wetland issues. They have addressed the traffic in the development. The traffic study will address outside the development too. But we've got to, as I said, fill up the empty spaces. And this is one of the, the spaces I think he's, the developer has done a good job of laying out the plan. And uh, I see no reason not to approve it. Just to comment on one of your comments. <clears throat> It is true that we're trying to fill empty spaces. But there's also an interest in preserving agricultural property. I'm not saying that that's going to affect my, my decision, but uh, it is currently agricultural property. Uh, so with that said, Blair. Yes, sir. Is it possible that we can do a continuation of this and hold off a decision until we see the traffic study and a more detailed drainage study? Um, so the traffic study would likely take enough time that we would be past the 120 day rule. And so, Sorry, say that again. so we, we have a state law requires a decision within 120 days of a completed application. So that completed application date was December 20th, I believe. Yes. And so essentially six months from December 20th, a decision has to be made uh, by then. 
Now, obviously, we have some time, but um, typically, typically, those kinds of traffic impact studies are intended to go into fair amount of depth, and it would put us pretty close to not getting it approved in time. Um, we we do require those, but they're not required as part of the um, subdivision application. So for, if the traffic impact study is your concern, uh, reiterating it among the conditions of approval would be the, the way to go with that, uh, is my recommendation at least. Uh, the other matter, uh, the drainage issues, uh, or to, to know more about drainage, if you have questions about drainage that are not met by, or the, and you're not satisfied with the comments tonight or with what's in the plans, and you want to, to them to develop something to address that, certainly you could, uh, you, you could, we could bring the applicant up and see if there's something that they could do um, when it comes to fleshing out the plans more to, to satisfy um, that question. And mm -hmm. that could be a reason to, to continue the meeting, yes. I mean, what he, well, there, he did mention that he planned that the, the, the plan was wetland fill permits, which just means water displacement, which means it's just going off his property, off this property so, somewhere else. So that's what wetland fill is. It's it doesn't absorb the water. It just displaces it, sends it somewhere else. Hopefully it goes to their stormwater so, tracks. But there's a I mean, there's a significant amount that they need to make sure that they mitigate. And it's coming off the mountainside, which means that it could fluctuate greatly year to year based on the kind of um, weather that we have. And yeah, I don't, there, there's plans to create drainage, but they, it's just basic based on what they might think. I, would, come. I would only add that they are, they are required to uh, retain on site any, um, any additional water that is, um, that is that is present because it's not absorbed by the ground because of their impermeable surfaces. So to to make that clear, when it comes to water that is currently flowing onto the property and off of the property, that water can continue flowing off of the property in that fashion uh, as it as it does now. If there is additional flow that is the result of their development activities, that additional flow must be, um, must be taken care of on site. And so that's what the detention basins within the, uh, within the development are intended to, to do. Um, ideally, those would be constructed in such a manner that they mimic wet wetlands. Um, but that's, that's one of the requirements that is part of our building code, part of our uh, engineering standards they would be held to. The design just doesn't seem to leave enough space um to do that and do you think we can accomplish that there's an awful lot of hard surface roofs concrete back mm -hmm. top mm -hmm. and let me just go on a little bit further we have a friend that lives on 43rd a single woman i volunteered in the past to help mow her grass and it's usually been about that much water on top I've been around a long time. I've been on the Planning Commission for a long time in the City Council. And that whole area is always a drainage problem. I don't I don't know what the answer is, frankly. I, I don't I'm not a wetland expert. I'm not a, a an engineer and I, I all I know is that we have standards that we would have that we would hold their engineers to. As for the wetlands themselves, we usually defer to the state on what the state will uh, will approve, because they are typically much more stringent than our uh, than our own rules. And so, um, that I would be, I mean, personally, given what I've seen from DSL and other developments, I'd be surprised if all of these lots were buildable, um, given what typically comes back from DSL when it comes to what they will approve. Uh, with fill and grade permits and such. So I get, I understand the concern um, and I hate to pass the buck, but there are, there are other agencies that are more, um, more experts than we are at, at managing that. 
and um, we we kind of naturally because of that defer to them. This is probably a question that doesn't have an answer, but it seems like most of the water from this property eventually makes its way to 43rd, the open ditches. Is there a way to quantify how much water is leaving this property now and be able to hold to that standard? Uh, I think there's certainly ways to measure the current flow. Um, it's not a an exact science, I don't think, um, because we, you know, if we had a pipe <laughs> that was collecting it all, uh, you could put a flow meter in it and get a pretty accurate reading of everything that was going through there. With open ditches, it's a lot harder to get that reading, and you have natural evaporation and other things that um, that make it less, uh, it make it more difficult to know exactly. Um, could we take some measurements or, or get an idea? Probably, but it would be more along the lines of, of anecdotal observations and, and things of that nature, um, because we're simply not a, equipped to get super accurate measurements that way. I, I only say that because, <clears throat> you know, it would give us some fodder down the line if, if there's a continued problem with drainage and water on people's property. We can say, well, okay, the same amount of water is leaving now as was leaving February right. 1st, 2024. So what what we would look at is we would look at the current conditions of, of what you would normally expect during a normal winter. Now, those vary greatly from year to year also, uh, to and vary greatly depending on neighboring properties, activities, and so forth. So it's, <laughs> it's difficult to get an accurate measurement of what that would be. Um, However, the, the standards that we have would indicate that whatever they, whatever flow that comes off of there, it, it's going to need to be handled uh, in some way. And that's probably going to be improvements along 43rd. Um, it'll certainly, it'll likely involve deepening that ditch um, and possibly all the way up to long to get that, to allow for that flow to happen. Um, so we, we, we do have you know, a mechanism for how to, to monitor that and take care of it. Our current um, stormwater fees that we collect don't go into improvements. That basically pays for a position. And so it's, a, it's paying the salary of a person to go out and work in, on the ditches and things like that. The comments about that people pay a fee and they don't have storm drains coming in, well, that's because the fee is only large enough to pay for the person and not for the improvements. The improvements get paid for through our system development charges and through our requirements that we put on developers. And so when it comes to our system getting improved, development is the way that our system gets improved. You turn your microphone on. Uh, you said there are other agencies that have the, the final say on some parts of this as far as development uh, water mitigation and so even if we approve it this whole development may not happen well i i Part wouldn't say it. It, i would say that this development would be impacted by those agencies decisions and it would impact them when it comes to how many buildable lots there are okay um, but approving it would be approving this plant as it stands I mean, for us, we would be saying this, we approve this plan. Right. What, what would happen is they would, if we, if, if you approve this plan tonight, they would move forward with their development plans. Like uh, Mr. Hutchins said, phase one would go in and is not really impacted by wetlands. And so uh, there's not any uh, mitigation that they would have to do during that phase. But the, the development of that phase would probably give them the capital to move forward with the next phases which would involve applying for those permits through DSL, um, the Department of State Lands. And depending what uh, those, that process says, you know, they'd be looking at uh, um, redesigning to accommodate uh, whatever um, that permit process results in. And that could, that could result in more open space. Uh, it could result in, in certain areas being untouched. Um, 
and and therefore it would result in fewer buildable lots. Now, one other thing that we really didn't address tonight, <coughs> our first application, of course, addressed the school district. You had 140 homes, and it's Hawthorne School. We we inquired whether they could handle that much additional. So the, the school district has been notified of this application. I don't believe we've received any comments from them. Um, they, they receive a notice anytime we put any of these out, yeah. they receive a notice of it. Right. So, and I know Kevin reads them because he told me. I did check the boundaries today, and this is actually uh, Foster Elementary That's and not true. Hawthorne. Um, in previous conversations with Kevin Strong at the school district, uh, Hawthorne was well situated to take additional students. I have not asked him specifically about Foster. Um, the, the fact of the matter is population growth is going to change that no matter what. Um, now, certainly the speed of development would impact that, but this is something where um, we regularly report to the school district on developments that are happening and the pace of those developments. Um, and so, uh, especially we, as soon as something like this was approved, they'd be aware that the subdivision was approved. We'd, we'd notify them. Um, once building activity actually starts, we would also keep them apprised of how fast the lots are being developed and, and how fast they're selling. So we, we try to work with the school district as much as possible. They understand that certainly this impacts their capacity, but it also impacts their funding. And so um, it, it's not a perfect system, but the funding does eventually follow these additional students. And that eventually does result in additional capacity at schools. It may have some uncomfortable hiccups along the way because nothing is ever a completely smooth road, but we do our best. Now one hopefully last comment. <laughs> 1,400 extra trips on 43rd is impossible a day. I don't know. I'm, it might be. In its current state, probably. Um, when it comes to, and that's what the traffic impact study is for, is um, I'm not a, a traffic engineer. I, I, do, I did have a job in college. Um, it was before some of the automatic systems, and I, I got a temporary job helping out some friends who were in studying civil engineering, and I had to have a clicker and count traffic that went by an intersection. And it's very surprising sometimes the capacity that an intersection has, um, because those 1,400 cars, it, those average daily trips, usually it's 700 one way and 700 back, and um, you'd be surprised at how many of those, when they're spread out, I mean, they're going to spread out, be spread out throughout the day. It's really amazing how the streets can handle different levels. I'm not saying this definitely does. I'm just saying I would rather rely on the experts to, to look into how that, what, what that would look like. Okay. Before we conclude, I'm going to ask each of you. Of course, we know what our choices are tonight is to approve it or disapprove it, approve it with conditions, et cetera. But if Blair communicates again with Mr. Hutchins, which he certainly will, what items would we like to have discussed? What are our great concerns? Can you turn your microphone on? I I would like a, a subdivision of this size to be uh, planned more like a community. Um, over 100 houses should have something that gives the people who live in that space a place to enjoy um, without having to get in their car and drive away. Um, and I see two stormwater drain tracks. I believe there's more if you dig into the plans. Okay, I just see two on the on the phase layout. I just see two designated so on on you, this map. There's four. Four, okay. Are you proposing some kind of a park or? I'm not proposing, I'm not proposing anything specific, but this is just a bunch of homes built on 40 acres. 
it's not a community for people to live in, but it is building houses. Is Mr. Hutchins still? Intent? It looks like he's still on the line. Okay. Yes, ma'am. We, we, we closed so the. We closed hearing. the public hearing. If if you want to reopen it to bring the applicant back to address any questions, we we can do that. Well, it, it would be good for him to be part well, of this. I, I mean, to I our conversation. We, I don't think so. It. It's okay. Let's go on. Eva, uh, what are your main concerns, and what would you like to have addressed in the future with Blair and the city? So, I just will emphasize the uh, topics that have already been mentioned. The storm drainage is a huge issue. The lack of concern for building a community is a huge issue. And I know he's not required to do that. But when a developer comes into a city. And intends to make improvements. Um, it would be. It would it would increase my confidence in their sincerity if I saw that there was concern for the people who will be living there. Mm -hmm. And then my third concern is about the hammerheads. I know that the fire department is mm -hmm. against hammerheads and I'm pro fire department. Mm -hmm. um, I understand the talk about future development to the east, mm -hmm. but I think that that, that those long-term concerns might be better eclipsed by thinking concretely more seriously about um, cul-de-sacs. And I have one more comment, and that is, this is 2024. This development is proposed looks like something out of 1960, and it's kind of embarrassing for me to represent an approval of something like this to the city as um, something we would like to see here 50 years from now. Um, that's it. I think I kind of already know your thoughts, Mary, but would you like to add anything to that list? <clears throat> I'm just going to make my next the last comment or the last comment. Uh, I received my book today. This is a huge project. I spent a good part of the day reading it, but I don't feel like I've had time to digest it very well. I don't know about the rest of you. Uh, <clears throat> I personally would like to see us continue this to a time certain a month from now or two weeks from now even and try to get more information on the traffic on the storm drains. I think Laura's suggestion about making it more of a community appearance rather than 140 houses on this plot of ground. And uh, that's just my opinion. Will a now, continuance, said, does a continuance allow for any changes to the application? Like if he, if the, if those comments, they wouldn't, he wouldn't be able to put it. In, in the past, when we've had a subdivision and it's been continued, um, typically there was some um, issue that was, um, that was that bothered the commission that they then redrew some things and and had another proposal. The one I'm thinking of the most is the Foothills Drive uh, subdivision, where um, there was concern about the street width and the how the the existing street uh, changed widths, and then there was a, kind of a redesign with the with shared driveways and things of of how those would be worked out. Um, and, and and that worked with the the applicant coming back with some modified plans. 
um, certainly that's uh, an option. The, on, the only thing I would, uh, I would um, caution you on is um, the criteria that are in the staff report is what is the basis of our, uh, is what we can judge this on. And so, um, unfortunately, when it comes to uh, community look and feel and things of that nature, while I completely agree that I would like to live in a neighborhood that that felt like that, um, that's not in our code. And uh, now, if we if we want it to be, certainly that that's something that we can can move forward with. Um, but it, that's unfortunately the the situation that we're in right now doesn't allow. Um, approving or or disapproving of it, it on that basis now on the other items in the criteria certainly those would be the uh, the things to look at well okay uh, as the assistant chairman and the one conducting the meeting tonight i'd prefer not to make a a uh, proposal but i will entertain whatever yeah, see if you would like to do. <laughs> and hopefully we won't spread it down the line. Well, and I would also add we are missing uh, two of our number tonight. Um, right. And so uh, if you know, that, that, that could play into your thoughts tonight as well. So are you saying that we could possibly make a, a determination or be amenable to continuation because of our lack of more people and that's a legitimate reason well, if you're split on the issue um certainly additional commission members split. would would help and that would uh, uh, continuing it to another meeting would solve that issue um if there are items uh that are within the criteria that you're genuinely concerned about and would like more details on such as traffic and, and stormwater detention um, and uh, you know perhaps even what uh, contingency plans are depending on what uh, DSL comes back with um, then more information could be requested of the applicant I would only I, the only concern I have about that is just making sure that we're specific enough that they can um, provide what what you're looking for. I, if you if you do want to discuss with the applicant about options uh, for modifications, you are welcome to reopen the public hearing and invite the applicant back up to um, to discuss anything that's that are possible modifications. Do we have a proposed new member or not? We are uh, unfortunately still without a seventh planning commission member. Um, we keep on advertising it. And this one will be here with us probably next time. Mm -hmm. Somebody make a I, I would advise if you are planning on continuing it, I would advise asking the opening it back up to ask the applicant if they uh, have some any scheduling conflicts that would prevent them from right. being present at a future meeting. We will reopen this public hearing at 9.02. And Mr. Hutchins, we've assumed that you've heard most of this. Are you still there? Yes, sir. So Lyle, this is Angela, if I can interrupt real quick. So if you are going to continue it, um, the next meeting is February 15th or the one after that is March 7th. So we'll need to choose, or even if you want to go farther than that, I can find the date, but we'll need to declare a specific date. So as commented on by the city staff, uh, how would this work for you if we had a continuation of this meeting to February 15th or March what? Seven. March 7th. February 15th, March 7th, or March, March 21st. 
Yeah. Given I, I would probably suggest March 7th because maybe we can get a traffic study on, on its way. It, a, a traffic study takes months and months. It will it will not. Okay. It, it, Okay, so I, Mr. Hutchins, we welcome your input now. Would uh, recommend March 7th. And uh, Blair is entirely correct that the traffic study takes a considerable amount of time, uh, but we can try to at least get some conceptual information with respect to what the a traffic study scope of work would be um, so that uh, have that to consider. Okay, we, we appreciate your understanding on that. And uh, I'm sure the staff is taking notes tonight and you'll be in communication with them and it would give us a little additional time to work through the materials that we already have and uh, for you to have a little time to consider some of our comments. So if that's all, we'll close the public hearing. And we, we'll we appreciate the hearing. opportunity to provide some additional information too, so thank you. Thank you. We'll close the hearing at 9.04 and ready to go home. So you you do need a motion to continue the oh, this to a future me. meeting. Eva's falling down on her job. When we started in the night, I should be sure. Sure, it's definitely sure. Eva's fault. <laughs> so let's let's have a motion of some kind. Okay, I move to continue the public hearing to March seventh. I second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 That worked out pretty darn good. Okay. But you're, you need to end the meeting if you're done with the meeting. Is there end the meeting? Unless you have anything else. Nine oh five. Thank you. I think you're starting to like this gavel. <laughs> We're through. <laughs> this is the applicant. Yes. If, if we're required to do it.